INEC National Commissioner and Chairman Voter Education and Publicity, Mr. Festus Okoye, stated this while featuring on Good Morning Show on a Rise News Channel, a broadcast arm of this day. He stated categorically that it was not the electoral body that was insisting that the governorship elections in the two states be conducted, but it is the Constitution. Okoye said that if INEC fails to conduct the two elections within the constitutional time frame, it means the electoral body has lost its right to fix the date for elections and that responsibility would now fall on political authority under sections 180 and 305 to fix dates for elections. He explained that INEC, as a constitutional body, derives its powers directly from the Constitution, adding that Section 178, Subsection 1 and 2 of the Constitution, as well as Section 25, Subsection 7 and 8 of the Electoral Act 2010, as amended, empowers INEC to conduct elections at a specific period. Joining us live is Oluwale Osaze Uzi, Director of Voter Education and Publicity, INEC. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning and uh, thank you for having me. Some of the reasons given looks strong enough, but with this pandemic, there are concerns by Nigerians as to how this election um, will be conducted. What are the plans to this? Well, uh, when you say it looks strong enough, um, everybody is free to uh, look at the Nigerian constitution and its provisions. Uh, time for elections, especially uh, at the end of tenure of a governor, are quite clear in the constitution. We must, you know, must conduct those election, the election between the uh, earliest is 150 days to the end of tenure and the latest is 30 days to the end of tenure. Now, and in doing this, um, INEC fixes the dates, but also has to, there are many dependencies, especially in view of this uh, uh, coronavirus and COVID-19. And uh, we will, and we have started consultations, and we'll continue to consult with our principal stakeholders. So we'll consult, because that's impact on different facets of our life. We'll consult with the uh, health authorities, with the political parties, and um, uh, CSO, media, all other stakeholders will be consulted in this in this in this regard, such that we should not exacerbate uh, a bad situation. It's a really bad situation. We should not do anything to exacerbate it. But some countries have succeeded in uh, conducting elections in this pandemic. Some have postponed elections. We have postponed some elections, but those are not end of tenure elections circumscribed by the constitution. So uh, that's we will do it in consultation with others. Okay, um, um, I, I asked about the plans because the concerns would be how are you going to get voters to come out to play their part when you have done your part? Because it's a two-way street. You are taking your constitutional responsibility seriously. The citizens also have to play a part. So what is INEC doing to encourage um, participation uh, in this process should you go ahead with it? Well, that's quite a valid question because... Um, there's no, there's no election without uh, uh, voters. And um, I think in most uh, cases, in Edo State, for example, and Ondo State, things are slowly beginning to return to normal in the sense that people, a lot of people are going about their normal uh, duties. Don't forget these elections are in September and in October, respectively, Edo and Ondo. Now, we believe that, um, we hope uh, things would have uh, a certain degree of normalcy Ought to have returned to the states because um, from the projections we've been reading from the two governments, um, the peak will probably be sometime in uh, June, probably early July. But be that as it may, we want voters to come. There are provisions, for example, we'll reissue our guidelines, we'll modify our guidelines, and um, everybody coming out in those two states must wear a mask, for example. We'll provide masks for our face masks for our officials. We will um, provide water. Uh, for people coming to vote and so that before you enter the polling unit, you must have, you must have washed your hands or sanitized your hands. You must wear your face mask and equally uh, staff and officials so that they don't get any uh, virus from anybody and they don't spread the virus. They also must take certain, there's certain protocols in place. They must take certain precautions to ensure uh, that. Um, in use of a card reader, for example, uh, we we'll use alcohol-based sanitizers to ensure that one person does not transmit it to any other person. So your hands are clean and will continue to decontaminate the polling units and ensure that all standard hygienic procedures are in place before um, any, any, any person is let into the arena for uh, voting. 
It's to encourage the people and put, tell them the steps we have put to ensure their safety. Okay, um, I guess this question should have come uh, before uh, the others. Uh, these constitutional crises um, that is, you, you alluded, uh, you, INEC has alluded to, uh, could you explain in layman terms um, what the repercussion would be and if there is any way around it? Okay, in answering that, let me say that this pandemic is, it has been disruptive of our normal life. It has fundamental impacts on lots of things. Uh, let me take three central to our lives. One is our health. That's, I think, uh, the, everybody knows the effect it has had on the health and well-being of people. Two is on the economy. It's been disruptive. But three is also the democratic health. Now, periodic elections are central to every democracy. In Nigeria, we have said it's four years for the occupant of the office of a governor. After four years, the Supreme Court has said it's like the rock of Gibraltar. You have to leave that office. Something has to give. And for something to give is to conduct an election. Now, if we don't conduct that election and it, uh, the, within the period, the tenure of the governor will end, they will have no governor. And you know the governor is central to governance of the state. He's a chief executive, chief security officer. He's a chief uh, first citizen of the state. Certain things cannot be done. You cannot pass a law, for example, in the absence of a governor. But... The Constitution has given um, a leeway for where the governor, for any reason, is absent. Then the deputy governor takes over. But in this case, the governor and the deputy are a joint ticket. So when the tenure of the governor finishes, so does also does, uh, 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 that of the, of the deputy governor. So you have no governor, you have no deputy governor. Some may argue, okay, the speaker can take over. But even if the speaker takes over, you don't take over 90 days and a, an election has to be conducted. Now, this is where he has resigned. The governor and deputy have resigned. They have been impeached. They're dead. It has no provision. It says nothing about um, uh, this kind of uh, situation. So if you want, there's a lacuna. But the constitution says, okay, if for any reason the country was at war, and that's a technical word, war, but this is not a war. Maybe like a war, but this is not a war. Then the tenure may be extended by the National Assembly for uh, six months. But the National Assembly has to pass a resolution assented to by the president. But this is not a war. So within the four walls of the Constitution, you may not find anything directly on point. You may have things that are akin to it or like it, but not one that we, it's a novel situation. All right. Thank you very much for that explanation. I'm sure those watching will find it very, very handy. Thank you.